Hello. Hello. Oh, we're, we're live. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the phone in. There you go. I mean, club Cl call. Evan Club call. Yeah, no, I'm looking at Ned. He's through me by just like talking about the Nard Dog. And the next time I looked up, we're live. It's like there was no rhyme or reason to it, but here we are. Good evening. Welcome to Club Call. Welcome to Club Call. If you are a premier member, then click the link and give us a call and tell us what you want to talk about. Give us a call. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? James Fadley said, what Seamus last night. He had a great game. Apparently, he was man of the match. There you go. There you go. But no, apparently he's about it. He mm -hmm. was man of the match. Michael uh, Carr says, evening. Any news on how our second hearing went this week? I don't think you find out within an hour. Yeah. No, I haven't heard anything, mate. Not heard anything at all. Um, so it'll be tomorrow. Jennifer says, rumours floating around we're getting six points deduction again. They will. Where they, do these rumours yeah, start? Someone, the, someone just says we're getting six points. And that is, is essentially what a rumour yeah, is, don't forget. Yeah. That's all it is. Someone just saying. should like, tone, calm down when, mm. where do you see the, these rumours coming mm. from? I heard. Like, well, you didn't hear, did you? You saw it on a Facebook group. You know, I heard. You didn't. You saw it on a Facebook group where Sid, Siddingly and Sinchester said, mm -hmm. we're going to six points. Nonsense. My mother is a cleaner at the uh, Premier League <laughs> headquarters <laughs> and she saw an email on a desk that said Everton were getting six points. No one will know and it won't be cow. cow. The, the, hearing was, the end of the hearing was today. They don't find out. They they find out when they get you know they go away now and deliberate on 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 their findings and mm -hmm. uh, that's how it works so yes deliberate you deliberated when you did the stuff in court didn't you jury duty oh of course uh, we deliberated exactly with each other exactly in a room exactly so you you're a you're a master of deliberating mm -hmm. i was actually Head off the deliberation. <laughs> that's terrifying. I mean, I don't, I don't, no don't wonder he got, don't think no that's he got real. Off. But I think this but, man is an innocent man. No wonder he got off and is roaming the streets <laughs> as we speak. As we speak. out there, they didn't invite me back to his second charge. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to be anyway. He was clearly wrong. Sophie says, "Oh, Nana was brilliant last <laughs> night. If he plays like that, we will win on Saturday." Um. Matthew's right. Says, come on, hit the like button. Well said, Matthew. Well said. Terry says, what can Everton do at Bournemouth? Good beach. <laughs> I was going to say win, but Friday the afternoon. The beach, get there the early, beach. go and have a little stroll on the beach. Mm, why not? I've never been to Bournemouth. No, no. I'm not, not sure not what the beach there, situation is. Well, it's very sandbanks is down there with Harry, Harry Lid. Oh, I've seen him, actually. Um, that looks very nice, sandbanks. Yeah, well. Very, it's very, not for uh, not for the likes of us, is it? No, it wouldn't be for us, but wouldn't very for us. Isn't it? Very, very. Sandbanks is the kind of place where you have coats that are heated. Fair play, fair play. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie's uh, Jamie. Jamie Redknapp's thing, isn't it? Mm. Heated coats and and other stuff. Yeah, fair play to him. Uh, Eugene says, I think Dicky Masters in the Premier League are bottling it with City and Chelsea. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Um, Ultimately, does anyone actually care anymore? <laughs> is the anger? Have people actually got the anger? I don't think they have. I don't think. Do you think there'll be any anger if if Evan gets another two yeah. points? Do you think there'll be any anger, or do you think people will just go? Where will it be from Evertonian? Yeah. Do you think people will just go? I, I don't know. I I think um, I I think Forest will get more points taken off them. Do you for appealing? No, I'd sorry, I mean they'll get points they'll get the appeal down to two, I think. Do you yeah? Oh I honestly oh, I, just, I don't nothing nothing will surprise me. No, you I couldn't be surprised by it, but I don't think nothing that. gets nothing surprised. I think me. they're they're um, struggling for us. They don't be palace at the weekend, I think they're in massive trouble. So nothing surprises me. No. Um, you couldn't you can't they're... be surprised by this. It's an absolute shit show, isn't it? Mm. Uh but there you go. Um Phil Cinema Cage, what did you guys think last night of Onana's performance? Well, I didn't watch the game. Mm. Um but I've seen I've seen the uh little package of him doing doing the rounds and he's just very neat and tidy because mm. that's what he is. He's done a, a couple of great 
tackle yeah, like he he's does. a good player and, and um he puts himself around the pitch he takes the ball off the center backs and he gets it back and he does what a six is supposed to do mm. he can't do it in our team because no one gives him the ball back mm. or people <laughs> struggle to take a touch to give him it back so that's what he. That's what is. Uh, Look, Dylan has said that when you see Onana playing for a different team, you see how much we are wasting them by playing course, percentage yeah. long ball nonsense. Yeah, we waste waste a couple of our best players by mm. by the way we play. Sadly, DP mm. is going to cheer us all up. Says the reality of us replacing Onana with Josh Brownhill is going to drain the life out of me, and Ben Me will be Branthwaite's replacement. And that's the scary well, I said thing. this to John at dinner time on um, on Sofi TV Premier. We were talking about it, and I just said it's. Onana will leave and he'll be placed by Josh Brownhill and I said the real issue with having a manager like Sean Dyche is the team becomes the image of him eventually um, and that's the real there's no there's no like there's no one really pushing to push the team on to go yeah, and get sh- shouldn't Kevin fell well that's what John said but, but I that. think I think that's just where we are as a football club is that yes we should have him Going out trying to find young talents, and but the probably probably will just end up with Josh Brano, and that's just so Burnley. That's just shoulder stone, isn't it? That is shoulder stone that we're just going to end up like like Burnley, sadly. Um, yeah, Steve says version two Burnley. Here we come. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Matthew said Coleman and Patterson had good games themselves, but someone just said Patterson. Didn't have a good game. I didn't see it, so I couldn't mm. possibly comment. Well, he made the mistake for Northern Ireland's goal, didn't mm. he, Patterson? So trying to be clever in his own box, and it got took off him, and then the lad just whipped sure. it in. So, um, and he'd done all the he'd done everything work, right yeah. that he that he was supposed to do. He he had the ball in his own box, and he was, but he turned inside and then tried to clip it away, and it was just instead of just maybe knocking it out for a throw, which is and just resetting. weird that a def- lot of defenders tend to do that. I, I'm. S- it it annoys me how many times footballers, instead of maybe just kicking it out, hit the ball down the byline where the opposition can just get the ball and, and it's it's a bizarre trait mm. in football that I never quite get. Yeah. Weird. Uh, the blue says lads own Arna will leave because he's sick of playing with players who can't pass the ball bar and brand. Well he won't, he'll leave because Everton's it's time right. and mm. Everton aren't going anywhere. And he is going somewhere and mm. said to John at dinner time, I, I really hope we sell him after the Euros and it's not because we'll get any more money for them mm. it might encourage maybe fans of like say Man United to want Manchester United to get involved if they're not involved but if we sell him beforehand and he has a good Euros you'll never hear the end of it no. of what we could have got now that's not how scouting works but the Euro it? starts on the 14th of June the season only finishes in the yeah, late yeah. when so there's only three weeks so I, and I don't think the transfer window opens until the twelfth of June, so theoretically Everton shouldn't be doing any no. kind of business until no, but after the. You Euro. can imagine, couldn't you, if we sold them before the Euros and he had a great Euro? Oh, well, of course. What yeah. the what what um mm. what the you know yeah. what it'd be like? So make sure he's an Everton player during you the see, Euros. See, I have I have an issue when the Blues and this isn't having a go at you, by the way. This is just an issue when people say things like, "No one can pass the ball, Bar Branthwaite," because. I was reading an article about Hendrik Ridston the other day, who's the Malmo manager, uh, talking about how he, he got his principles in football. And he was saying it was, uh, I felt, he said, I felt as a player, it was all about being safe, safe, safe mm. all the time. And it was about not making mistakes. He said, I kept playing um, with this kind of attitude from coaches. He said, but my feeling when we played was we could do so much more than we were being allowed to do. Mm. And he said, when I played with my friends when I was younger, I played in a totally different way and enjoyed it until I started playing professional football. He said, so as a coach now, he has Malmo playing crazy, like mad risky football, but they won the league, they're in the Champions League next year. They play play tight spaces. So if you watch them, it's dead weird. They, They... where it's congested, they go and play football and try and open up the pitch on the other side yeah, with yeah. the same risky one-twos. So because when we break through that pattern, with you know they're in on goal and stuff, and he was like, it can't always be just be okay. safe and that's. And I honestly believe, and listen, this is just, I honestly believe if Everton had a different manager who was all about playing football, 
they will play so much better football, even with this current team. Now, would this current team still be as defensive strong without that? I don't know. But I, this team can is better than what the football it's allowed to play. You are. You're limited. By the you're limited by your... Footballers will always be limited by... The, this is when people talk about managers and coaches. You will always be limited by what your team, how your team plays, because mm. that's what your manager um, allows you to do. And ultimately, you you need good coaches to make you better, and you need um, you need a good manager to set you up in a way that's going to get the best out of everyone. And Ever- Everton just haven't had that in the last no. out of the last three managers. They've had managers who are stuck in one way and don't know how to get out of that and yeah. that's 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 a real tough part of it and you take the players and you say right well, this is what we're going to create out of it and that's how the players have to have to play they can't just make it up as they go along mm-hmm. um and sadly we are we are and a lot of people have bought into this and that if that's what they want to do that's what they want to do i've i find it mad when i read some of the stuff uh about sean dice about how how amazing he is because we have a great defensive shape and all that kind of thing. Footballers, you are, you can improve. You can, you can, you can make things better with coaching and different outlooks on things. Sometimes it goes too far. Sometimes you get to a point where you like, it's the right place. And then the manager pushes it past that. And that's what someone like Roberto Martinez did. Um, Footballers can be improved though. They can be. That's one of the things of like if you watch footballers and you show how much they improve year by year. Players, I think a a, a a really poor sign or a real sign sorry of a poor manager or a poor setup is when players come to like twenty three and they just stop developing and that is just a really really bad insight to where the football club is. Um, yeah. Man. Uh, Sophie says praying Dice goes at the end of the season. He's turning us into Burnley. Um, she also says the fab letter Machiri's refused to meet them. Uh, Stay also says, uh, Can we all just admit now it'll be a crime against humanity if Dice is still here next season? I'm done with sugar coat and how grim the whole thing with him is. I don't think we can put it all on Sean Dice either, though, can we? You know, the players haven't been good enough either. Um, James says, Brownhill on a free as a squad player. Yes. As a replacement for Onana. No. Um, Bob, the blue says, happy if Onana goes after the Euros, but it's 100 million minimum. Mm. Barry P says, I mean, this is a cheerful comment. Uh, when we get older, the more recent stuff will disappear with dementia. Mm. Is that the only thing we have to look forward to? Possibly, yeah. Fair play, good shout. Mm. Good shout. Yeah. Remember the good times. <laughs> um, Celtic Vape says Seamus needs to come in for the remaining games. Look fit and up for it against Belgium and the mm. Swiss. Plenty of fight left in his tank. We need him to play. Terry says if Dyke leaves, it's a Potter or Motte for me. Thiago Motte. Thiago Motte. Heard that mentioned earlier. Where it's come from? Thiago Mata. Yeah. Steve Kelly loves him. Genuinely likes him. Mate. He's done he's done all right, Thiago Mata. Good coach. Sergio Contrasau's a good coach, but that you get him out of Porto, but he's a good coach. But we'll see. There's loads, isn't there? There's loads of, of good managers. Ian Bennett says we play coward football. Mm. 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 Yeah, yeah. Um Steve P says, how can professionals at the highest level not pass a ball when I literally see Sunday lead teams passing it down like it's nothing? It's clearly due to the coaching and what's going on in training. Um, Bob the Blue says, the bottom line is we're skin tight is okay and doing an okay job. He's all we can afford. Now, it is what it is. Is it? Though? Yeah, I don't agree with yeah, that either. I don't either. agree with that either. Not saying sack him, but I, I, that line of it's, oh, that's where we are now, and that's all we can, I don't buy into that in the slightest, to be honest with you. Um, so over that, uh, Matthew, yet the Ukraine did qualify last night. Mm. Um, Dylan Blue says, if the training all week on shape and organisation and the messaging is all about percentages and safety, then obviously they follow that. Yeah, they will, mate. Footballers don't 
footballers in this day and age don't play don't play anything other than what their manager tells them mm-hmm. to play. So what they work on all week, they work on shape, they work on um transition, pressing, set pieces, stuff like that. They don't do their own thing. They, it's just not in football anymore. It's why football is is so rigid and robotic nowadays, is because mm-hmm. it's about it's tactical. Now it's all tactics. It's not we'll beat you because we've got better players. It's just that's how it is now, and that's why the the game is, for a lot of people, not improving. Some people love mm-hmm. it. It's the age of the nerd, isn't it? It's the age of the stat, stat king. Mm-hmm. That's what it I is I love now. stats, but they're only good to a certain extent. My eyes tell me everything I need to know. Unf- unfortunately, there's people who watch the game through stats, though, yeah, well, that's and, nonsense. and that's nonsense. That's not what football is. It's not... It's not reviewing the game afterwards and going, actually, we didn't play poorly. We played well because these stats all told me that we played well. That's not true. Football is being in the stadium and being excited by what you see, getting your, getting on the edge of your seat or standing up and like on your tiptoes. That's football. That's what football I was brought up on. Not reviewing the game afterwards and going, well, actually, we, uh, the ball recoveries were unbelievable. We played really well there. That's not football and it never will be football. And far too many people tell you that's football now, and they're just wrong because they don't go to games. They don't. They've never had the stadium experience that we we've, mm. we've had. They don't. They watch it via, via telly, and you know. Oh, and uh, you know, every now and again they'll check what the what how many touches some. And I, I've been guilty of that, by the way, sometimes. But football is about being in the stadium. It's about. It's only live once, all that stuff. And sadly, it's been taken taken away from us by nonsense, basically. And that's why you don't get footballers who play off the cuff anymore, who are just doing brilliant things, because cause then they're expected to get back into their position and all that. And it's like, nah, give me the number 10s. Yeah. Give me the JJ Cotches of the world. Well, you meant like Sigurds and Class and Blasser to really. No. Not that one. Give me the number 10s. Even tens. then, though, we can talk about Jack, but at least they all had goals in them. Give me number 10s, mm. who, like JJ Cotcher, who just did their job and weren't expected to get back because. Mm. I mean, we had one in Hamas Rodriguez, didn't we? And he was one of the finest <laughs> footballers I've ever seen play for Everton in my life. In my life. That was the level. Satoshi Corner says Motta will go to Juve or Milan. Done an unreal job at Bologna. Yeah, see, he's done a brilliant job, to be fair. Uh, Stephen Twist says something I think we're all thinking. Mm. Oh, crap, we're playing this weekend, aren't we? I've hey. enjoyed the last two weekends. And we're playing on Tuesday as well. Yeah. Oh, you've got three games in a week now. Don't worry about that. It's back with a bank. Good times. Um MK says, hey guys, some of the bias against Pickford is mad. He makes one half mistake for England in seven years and everyone wants him out. Nobody even mentions Dunk's mistake. There's not even a discussion to have with Pickford. There's not a goalkeeper near him. Ramsdale, just do me a favour. James Trafford, do me a favour. Nick Pope's injured and is nowhere near Pickford's level anyway. Who's the other one? Sam Johnston's out injured anyway. Is there another keeper? No. There's nobody at Pickford's level. Am I asked whether Pickford plays for England? Not really. Not really, but I'm also not blind and stupid. There's no other goalie on his level who's English at mm. the moment. It's just the way it is. People just have to get over it. So don't worry about it. Uh, Simon says this needs... Simon says, tremendous. This needs to be Dyches last season because we can't have another season struggling to win home games. We must beat Brentford, Forest, Burnley and Sheffield United at home. Jennifer says, if we play a more expansive game, can these players do? Look what nearly happened under Lampard. He never went 11 games or four months without winning the league game, though, did he? Um, Phil's Cinema Cave says, would you rather have Dom or Kadamatsu up front? Dom. Hmm? Steve P says, Baz, would you have Paolo Fonseca? I want them pre-season Marco Silva vibes. That felt so refreshing. After fat, Sam. Um... But I have Paolo Fonseca. Don't know. I think the football will be much better, and he is a really good coach. He was incredible at Shakhtar. We, he's had a couple of goals at Everton, hasn't he? He's mm. interviewed a couple of times and didn't interview well. But that doesn't mean anything because we chose other managers who must have interviewed great. I mean, coming them crap. So I don't know is the answer. Uh, <clears throat> He's obviously a good coach, but could he do it here? I don't know. I honestly don't know, mate. I'm, I'm past being able to go, I'd have him, 
because we don't go after the people I'd have anyway. And we always make the wrong choice. And, and we, no one can say we haven't made the wrong choice since David Moyes left because we've had eight managers in 11 years, which is utterly horrific. So to, it sells you every time we've made the wrong choice. So... Um, can we have some callers, please? Yeah. Please, if you're on Toffee TV Premier, just give us a call. Where's Eddie? Where's Al Clark says, I think we need patience. Deitch is a proven manager. Deitch finished seventh with only 34 goals. I don't know whether you're tongue in cheek there, Al, or you're being serious. I don't know. Um, I think people have got patience with Deitch. Mm. Winning three home games and you're in April. Is embarrassing. It's embarrassing, no matter who you are. So, don't know. Um, <laughs> Nicky Newblue says, "Forget about us for a few weeks. Watch Shogun. It's brilliant." I'm watching Shogun, and I have I have forgotten mm-hmm. about us for a few weeks. This is um, we're back to normality now. So, um, Phil Cinema Case says, "Question for Pet: Does he prefer Terminator One or Terminator 2? Two? Miles better. Mm-hmm. Miles better. Ned's going to show us, if you're feeling a bit down on a Wednesday afternoon, Ned's going to put this video on and it's going to make you all feel so much better about your own lives. Is he putting it on now? He's putting it on now. Just watch it, oh, Bass. Watch okay. it, Bass. Watch this. Okay. What's happened? What's Chris doing? Is he drunk? I'm Red. Is he drunk? Just play it again. What? <laughs> Why is he trying a one-handed? <laughs> fair play. Is he drunk? I don't know, but I just think it's amazing. Fair play. I think it's amazing. Fair I think play. It's, it's the boost everyone needed. Fair play. I think it's that from Dublin. Yeah. Yeah, fair play. I just feel it was the boost that everyone needed. Fair play. Steve Kelly just joined the chat room. So we've got Steve Kelly, but I, what I love is he put in the chat, it's me, Ned. Well, he's just like no indica- It's me, Ned. Steve Kelly. It's me. Well, there is a, there's a couple of Steve Kellys. We were Evertonians on Twitter and stuff. What chat group? Yeah, I know that. Oh, we're on in, the, oh he's the, coming on the, the, the... Oh, he's coming on. He's got, here, yeah. Oh. Get ready for Steve. We'll, we'll get him on in a minute. We'll get him on. Tiago Motta chat, maybe? Yeah, he can put you in his pla- in your place no, over. It's not a place. Where does it come from? Melly, before we go to Steve, says, Oh, no, nah, a mad potential, young, powerful, a very good six who can develop into other positions. Belgium international for years to come, so I think we can command a very good fee for him, 80 to 100 million. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have got Steve Kelly on the line. Steve, hello, how are you? And what do you want to say? Hi, lads. You all right? Yeah, not bad, mate. Not bad. Good, good, good. Thiago Mata, why what's been said about him today? Well, someone just said they'd like us to go for Thiago Mata, and Ped was just like, Thiago Mata? Mm. Wasn't convinced, so before no, you go on to your normal po- your point that you were going to make, what have you got to say about Thiago Mata? Because I know you are a fan. Yeah, I'm a big fan, yeah. He's obviously manager of Bologna. Uh, mm-hmm. Bologna are currently sitting, I think they were fourth or fifth. Um in Serie A, so he's doing a good job. Um, he plays attacking football, he plays young players. Um, obviously, he's a, playing a player I really like at the moment, Lewis Ferguson, who they got from Aberdeen. Yeah, um, he's flying at the moment. Is, Italy, yeah. seven. Probably got a big move to Juventus or Napoli by the looks of it this summer. Yeah, yeah. they've also got Joshua Zerki, who's doing really well, who I haven't been linked with a while ago. Brand uh, size to get, yeah. So Brands, he took a bit of time to obviously get going at Bologna, but obviously he's doing really well now. And I think he's just kind of like, I don't know, give give their fans a lot of belief and give them attacking football, which is uh, which is always good to see, isn't it? So oh god, I'm mad, isn't it? I'm mad, isn't it? Anyway, right. Steve, go on. What was your what was your real point going to be before I, I dragged you on to uh, yeah, on to Thiago just, Mata? It's just in regards to obviously some. We spoke about a couple of weeks ago when we, I was actually in, and it was about Onana. Uh, I actually got a funny feeling that Onana won't start on Saturday <laughs> against Bournemouth, weirdly. Because if you actually look at the last couple of... of let's, go, let's go back to early on in the season when he was dropped for the Bournemouth game and then he was yeah. brought back in because, obviously, Garner Gay got injured during yeah. the... Uh, the warm-up, the, yeah. The warm-up. 
And I just think since then, it just something's not sat right with me with him and Dyson. I think there's been certain games where he's been left on the bench. Obviously, could be down to fitness, but when he's come on and he doesn't look like he's unfit, he's obviously uh, gets hold of the ball, always looking to play the ball forward. Yeah. And I just think with Bournemouth at the weekend, and obviously I'm obviously very defensive minded. We we have as a manager, I just don't know whether he'll go for the, the like the steelness of like. Garner Gay and James Garner, where personally I would be looking at dropping James Garner this weekend. I think he's been pretty right. poor for the last couple of weeks now. Uh, I think we need the legs of Garner Gay in there, but we need the the, the, the midfielder of our own arm who's going to play the ball actually forward, where I do find James Garner is very uh, Vinny Samways sideways. Um, yes. So I don't know what you boys think. Do you, do you think own Arna could be left out this weekend and like, because we've seen him, we've seen him do this before. It wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't play. To be honest, um, I do. Th- I think you're right. I think he does prefer James Garner than Amadou Onana. Um, I think it's this uh, is important to us because of the way he gets around the pitch. I think the the obvious one to drop for me would be the Corey. But then the minute you drop the corner, you're losing goals, so you can't. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm talking about a midfield three. If you're talking about someone who's not been at it lately, it's the corner. But then he has to play because he's someone who will get mm-hmm. you the goal. So the only other thing they could do, Steve, is push James Garner. If he wanted to make sure they're all in the side, he could play James Garner off on the right, couldn't he? As more of a defensive structure because it's away from home. But even right back. Uh, or even I play Seamus personally now, um, and then I'd have maybe James Garner slightly ahead of him mm. if you wanted to do it that way. But it wouldn't surprise me if Amadou Onana was was not starting. Yeah, well, I think I think if you look at our best probably away performance of the season, it was probably away at Brentford and James Garner played off the right that day. He played, he did, yeah. He played a bit inside. Obviously, it wasn't really like a, a right winger. He was more no. like like a, like an inverted type, uh, and obviously he went. I think Dice's second half actually went to like a diamond, if I remember mm, right. He did, yeah, he did. And, he and the thing it. is, the thing with it is, at Goodison, yeah, I don't think you can play James Garner on the right because I think you have to you have to be a bit more attacking than yeah. that. Uh, and we saw when he started home games on the right, he, was, he wasn't he was great because his natural instinct isn't to fly down that right-hand mm. side and, mm. and get shots and crosses in. But I think away from home, because you have to play with a, a bit more of a defensive structure, yet yeah, we saw the cross he put in when he moved over to the right against West Ham, the ball he put in for Beto's goal. Yeah. was absolutely fantastic yeah. from that area. And if that was... If it is better again at the weekend, or if Dom comes back in, mm-hmm. that's the kind of service certainly Dominic Calvert Lewin needs. It's the kind of service Beto needs, and that way is an opportunity to get those busy midfield players in there, as in the Drissa Garner guy in there with Onana sitting back. You've still got then the insurance of James Garner, and you've got Abdullah the Corey as well. So it is a way to do it. But I mean, yeah. I don't know, Pet. Would you be surprised if Onana was no, subbed? Not weekend? at all. I don't think. I don't think that. I don't think Dice likes him. I mm. just don't. Yeah, I agree. S- said this yeah. before. Said this a few weeks ago on on one of the other, on, on round the tower. I just don't think. I think he's phasing him out. I really do. Um, I just. I just. I, and I look at. I look at when Garner and Nana play. They play in the same position. Yeah, they do. Um, yeah. Seen that you know the 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 they uh, occupy the same they occupy space. the same space and yeah. it's pointless having both of them in the side and. Oh, Nan is just a better player, and uh, we said for weeks, and I, I don't mind insulting anyone's intelligence here, but he just is, and if people can't see it, then that's on them. He's a hell of a footballer, and you know, he'll prove he showed it last night. And even though people will go, oh, "What's he doing there?" That's the game now. It's number six who gets it, who keeps the game ticking over, and breaks, wins, yeah. breaks it up, clean tackles, very clean in the tackle as well. That's that's a modern footballer, and we've got one there, and we just don't use them, and mm. it's it's mind boggling. Again, me and John at dinner time we're talking about this same. We, Everton have been so guilty when we've had players of like you have a couple of good players, but the rest of the team is poor, and it just drags them down. And then sometimes when we've had good teams, we haven't had that one player to finish it off. Say if Romelu Lukaku played in a Moyes team, say, and it's just so frustrating that we've got a couple of good players, and they should be. You should be looking at that as like, oh, nah, it should be the first name on the team sheet and saying, right, we're going to build the team around him. Mm-hmm. Even if it's only for a short term, 
but we don't we do it the other way where it's like no you you won't we won't play you because actually got someone who can sort of play that job and i've said this loads of times and i'm not being audible james garner's at the at, at the height of where he's ever going to play he's never going to yeah. get any better than everton it's just, simple, it's just simple fact he's not good enough as a as a footballer to elevate himself past everton own honor will and i think that's why some people maybe don't buy into 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 his ability and maybe that's why the manager at times hasn't bought into his ability I, I don't know can't can't speak for him but it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't play and he just had um the t- two sitters i think onana takes risks and yeah. maybe the manager doesn't like that maybe the manager doesn't like the risks that he takes um I think as well sorry i think if you look at onana as well like and if you looked at him last night compared to when he plays for everton the reality is when he plays for Everton, the ball's just going over his head half the time because we don't we don't play the way he wants to play football. Like I've seen it a few times when like Pickford's had it and he's demanding the ball mm. and then Pick, Pickford will just lash it long and he'll get frustrated with Pickford because and I, I I understand where he's coming from because that is the modern day modern day way of playing. You play through you play through your six. You don't play you don't like obviously we were speaking last night about Bramford's uh, passing completion. Mm. It's not as good as obviously it, it should be, but that's because he's encouraged just to lash the ball forward, really. And um, that that might be one of the reasons why. Um, a number, and modern number six helps break the press, doesn't it? Yeah. They take the ball off the centre backs. The press comes on them, and then they move it round quick. And that's what the number six is for. But we don't mm. we don't offer. I've said this loads of times. Look how easily Onana takes the ball off the defenders and yeah. with one or two touches is then shown for somebody else or, uh, to give someone else. What then should happen is he should move into space and get it back, but a lot of the times he doesn't because the player he gives it to can't control it and pass it within two touches. And that's a real issue for this team. Because that pattern of play isn't isn't tra- isn't practised. But it's it's like just- When we roll it out from the back, you can tell... It's not practiced because it ends up back with the goalie who lashes it to the outside. But I often line. think that that is practiced though to be to do that it, though. Or, or almost like almost like to bring the well, you bring obviously to bring the opposition out and out. then isolate the yeah, Dom against the centre back. Yeah. I often think that's a because we do it that often that it's it, for me it is work. Well, it's shocking it is a shock. It is shocking. It's, it's shocking a shocking coaching. way of playing. Yeah. But it, what? It, yeah. the, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go on, mate. Go on. You no, go ahead. Go ahead. Stay, go ahead. I was going to say about you saying it about practice, and I think. I wasn't a big Frank Lampard, obviously, fan. I thought I didn't think he was obviously a great manager. But if you actually remember, like, let's go back to that Palace game where that goal, remember where we played it out from the back? Mm-hmm. That looked like it was practiced properly. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, like, I think what you're saying there, Baz, is right because every time <laughs> every time we try and play off from the back, it looks like they're absolutely shitting themselves half the mm-hmm. time yeah. because they know the first instances. Oh, what will Dice think? Oh, let's just lash it forward instead, and let's try and get a flick on and play the percentage type football. Where, like, like I think, I think, I think, like you said there, Baz, it just, it just seems dead like awkward for a lot of them. Like, mm. I think even like, like you said there about James Garner, I think when he's receiving it in the six, he, mm. it looks, he looks really panicky when he's getting it at the ball. Where Onana, he looks just like. I think you have more faith that he's not going to lose the ball due to his physicality, due to his uh, close control. See, I- I'd have no problem with them just going direct. But what I would then, I'd love to ask Sean Dyches, you know when we play direct yeah. and it's up to Dom, Dom more often than not dominates the centre-half as in terms of winning the first contact. So why aren't we having two runners past them then? Yeah. For a flick? Because the amount of times he flicks it on, no one runs. And he'll run after it himself. I, I, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's not like I. It's not like I want us to play 800 passes because I don't. But I don't understand. It's almost to me like we're just we're trying to do one thing, but there's no plan B for it. Yeah. And when we do our other plan, which is smash it long, we're not even doing that correctly. So yeah. I just like the manager or the coaches or at Wone or even the players to just go. We're sticking with this. We're going direct, and I'm going to gamble. The core should be running beyond them every the single wing, time. The wingers, the wingers, the wingers yeah. The yeah. wingers should be like. The reality is, our full, uh, obviously, what Mikalenko and we've got Godfrey or Coleman or Patterson. Mm. Our our fullbacks are fullbacks. They don't play like wingbacks like they should. Like modern day fullbacks yeah. do. Where yeah. our wingers, our wingers play like. Fullbacks, if that makes sense, mm. it's yeah, weird. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, I watch it sometimes, and like you got Mikalenko who's on 
like who's just at the maybe like 40 yards up the pitch and then you've got McNeil who's like only 50 yards up the pitch yeah so yeah we're too I, close together where... I have a go at our kids seeing for this for our wingers that or our wide players standing almost on the toes of, of our fullbacks yeah. so there's no space for them to attack or when they get it you're making your job harder because you're 10, 15 yards further back than where you should be receiving the ball. Yeah. Thingy, we used to, me and Ped used to say this about Luckman, didn't we? Mm. Adam Ola Luckman would want to drop 15 yards into our own half and pick the ball up. And then he'd set off with it. And by the time he got to the area where he should have been doing his work and his damage work, he was tired. Yeah. So people would take the ball off him. And it's like, and he, I've, I've watched him now for Atalanta and he does his best work in and around the box. The box. And yeah. therefore, he's committing people. Mo Salah, and I know I'm talking about different level players here, of course yeah. I am, but they don't pick, he doesn't pick the ball up five, ten yards outside Liverpool's penalty area, does he? And just sprint with it. He's ready to go in the, the final third. We've just been having this conversation about players who are just saying there about number 10s that you miss, oh, miss yeah. who's they just like didn't have to come back. You know, if your team built in a certain way, players mm. will work hard, but they should never have to get back because there's other players who will do the job, not do the job for them. But allow them to play. I mean, the, the the point being is, a lot of modern teams play four three three, and those front three, those wide forwards, never have to come back mm. past the halfway line because you're on the front foot all the time, and you you and you've got seven defenders in that. You midfield dominate <laughs> and and take care of the ball. Mm. And just going back to what you said before, Baz, about like what we don't do is we never lose the ball. We never try and play out from the back very... And we never really concede goals. No, not for Because no. of that, because mm-hmm. we don't take those kind of chances. So on one point, he'll, that, that's fair enough. And Sean Dyche will say, see, we don't give away stupid yeah, goals no problem like that, other yeah. teams yeah. do, try and play out mm-hmm. the back. But on the flip side of it, that's where have an Onana. I, I I look at Onana, I just think if you if you did play through him, you'd just have so many more options if you yeah. did say to him, once he's got the ball, um then you it opens the pitch. Um remember Ke- John Collins moving on because yeah. he said the ball you should just go over his head uh, all the time. Yeah. So we wanted to leave. Well that's yeah. what Onana yeah. might feel. Okay. Okay. Keynes just said what sums up Dice and Onana is Dice getting Onana to speak to Stephen DeFore about advice about the Premier League. <laughs> but, but I was, you know, gonna, I was, I was, I was going to say send from send from Skem. Um, I was going to say to you as well. I think that, that that is a big issue for me that like the wingers because I was just going through it the other day about you know like other teams who are even round about us. Like you look at Brentford, they've got pace and Buemo this yeah. and out wide, yeah, yeah. and you've got like Salute. They've even got like Ogbené and um, obviously they've got Dowerty who's good. Obviously he's, he's a bit he's more. Good. Yeah. He's a bit he's more good. Like, he's more of a wing back, isn't he? But he, he's yeah. done very well. Yeah, he's had a you look at like the likes of Palace, they've got a Lise, and they've got another kid on the wing. Then you look at, then you got like Forrest, they've got a Langer, mm. and uh, like then you look at likes of Bloom, if they got a Tara and other lads, and then obviously um, uh, vice versa. We've just got we've got two wingers who are basically the same person. Like, yeah. like you just they just kind of like do the same job and don't really deliver, and they're not quick enough to get. And I think that's part of the reason why no one's supporting the likes of Beto and Dom is because. Mm. Our two wingers just haven't got the pace to get up no. there. And then, and I think and then that, that kind of understands the reason why now we were looking at maybe a Nonto or a Somerville or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. That. No, but it's why. Mean, and a Lange. I was just going to say, Steve, though, it's why like Patterson doesn't get in the team because because of the way he plays. He would stand out as a as a oddity within the side be, yeah, yeah. because it sits back and plays defensively. And Patterson isn't a good enough defender yet no. to do yeah. that. So therefore, if you're gonna, you, we don't have attack and fullback, so it's pointless right. playing attack and fullback. And that's that's why we are where we are because but that's you, why I don't understand why the core. Like I don't like I said, if you've got what you've got, and the manager's trying to get a good structure in place with what he's got, but. When we are going long to Dom, I don't know why one of our players isn't running beyond them, and that should be Decore, really. He should be going a minute, that ball's in the air, he should set off. So we are a very gets... easy team to play against, Dom. Yeah, you? yeah. You watch, like, I, especially at Goodison as well. Like I watch at Goodison, I never feel like, like, we're, like we're, I don't, I don't feel, if I was an away team, I'd be like, wow, this is so easy. Like, yeah. This is just like, all I've got to do is make sure I defend the second ball, which gets launched up to us. Mm. Really. But we are better away, aren't we? Yeah, we, yeah. We, we, yeah. Look, we look, because there's no onus on us away from home, and we can just sit in a low block, um, we are better. The problem I have with the low block is that I feel like football has changed so much oh, yeah, that you have to, 
be more aggressive to Bournemouth, win enough games. Bournemouth had a very interesting uh, comparison because obviously we're playing them on Saturday. They yeah. started the season and when they played us at Goodison, on that day, I that just said, these are going, so. these are going down. But, these yeah. going, but they persisted. They kept playing that way and mm-hmm. they got wins. And up till maybe about six weeks ago, they were on a great r- little run. Mm. And then it's, it, you know, it, it went, started going wrong a little bit. And then obviously the looting game, they've put it right. But they've gone into something they believe. And of course, they have got players who've got pace and they've got a goal scorer as well, which is huge. Um, and Solanke. But they're yeah. proof that if you, if you do have, if you go out and say we're playing this way, it, it can it can work for you. Yeah, it really it can. can. I think that was I've just what my last point and I'll let Eddie come on. Go on. Um, I, do, I think that was probably my only like my biggest worry when we obviously appointed Dice as manager is that like I don't really think you can keep I think I said at the time to Baz, you can't win games just one nil these days anymore. It doesn't no. the Premier League, if you actually look at this season, I think I think it, the, the the average of goals going in has gone up. Uh, mm. it's like I think it's like free, free, an average of free a game or something like that now, where you don't really nick games no more, and you can't really. I don't know. I just don't. I think those days of nicking one nils and and like digging in is is over really because the amount of the amount of attack and display I suppose on the Premier League it just it's very rare. Like, there's like, there's you know, a lot more offensive coaches stay, isn't it? That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, I just that was probably my biggest worry when we when we got that. You thought. And I watch it when I watch it at Goodison. He's got he's got to find a way of 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 winning games at home because mm. it, it's just been if you look at it, even since he's been at the club, it has been pretty pretty shocking. And and like bar the Newcastle game, we've only really won games by the odd goal at Goodison. Mm. It's not like been like comfortable wins like Bournemouth last game of the season, Leeds at home, Brentford at home last season. Mm. These are all like really tight games, like where. If Seamus doesn't score that weird goal against Leeds, do mm. we didn't probably look like we were going to score against well, Leeds. Well, the three. What's what's mad about that is though the three home wins we've had this season have been three and nil, three and nil, mean, and yeah. three and nil, three and nil, and two nil. We and haven't I've, won a we haven't won a home game by one goal, so we can't even hang on our own. <laughs> what do you mean? It can be done. Then it can be done. So the proof's there. Mm. It's just I think it's having, and it's something I always I go on about. Managers, you've got to be brave these days. You've got to be brave as a manager. You can't. You can't just like think. You can't think that like, oh uh, yeah, just hold off for a bit. Hold it. You got, like I like I said a couple of weeks ago in the pool in the, in the cup final, like their manager was brave to bring those youngsters on because he believed in them. Yeah, he I, was. Just, I just don't know if you look past if you past look past our first eleven. Dice probably doesn't believe in anyone else. I'd say. No, we're, we're genuinely one of the only teams in the Premier League who play the way we do. Everybody else is trying to play attack and football. Now there's a different. Even Luton, Luton tried to Luton started the season, and they tried to start very defensively. But I think, and then a, a point they just went, "This isn't going to work. We're going to have to outscore teams here." To, and, that's and, that's and that's gone either. That's gone. That's gone either way, hasn't it? Let's be honest. It's. You know, two 0 up and then three. You know, being four two up, I think at Newcastle, they don't know when to shut a game down. But you're yeah. right; a lot more teams in the Premier League are trying to just go. No, no, we'll we'll beat you today by scoring goals, not necessarily clean sheets. And it, yeah, it's going to be. You've got to offer, otherwise, it's like a it's like a boxing fight. Yeah. It's like trying to stand in the corner and just cover up yeah. all the time and hope you get the odd jab off and win on points. Well. Oh, you're ne- yeah. Or you're just going for one knockout punch. But if you stand in a corner of a fight, hoping for one knockout punch while your guards up most of the time, that fella's just gonna either knock you out himself, or he'll win every round comfortably. And you've got no chance of winning. You might win the odd one by catching someone I'm- with a lucky punch, but football's uh, yeah. moved on. I think it so much. Mm. It does. Yeah. Sad. Oh, nice on stay. Nice on stay. In a bit, boys. Take it easy, yeah. Tara. Um. Nick, Neil McKenzie says the Scottish media are blaming Dice for I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm not moment. surprised. Um, Mark Douglas is reporting in the eye that uh, 777 will be lending more money to Everton to cover wages and stadium costs. Um, that's for the, end, one, for the end of this. That's what he's reporting. I'm not yeah. saying whether it's true, false, in, indifferent. Well, that doesn't surprise me because that's their commitment to finishing yeah. the stadium, isn't it? So, so that's just been reported yeah. now. Fair enough. Have we got Eddie? Get Eddie on then. The big Texas fella. <laughs> Fair play. 
Hello, Eddie. Hello. Hello, Eric. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Ed. Go on, mate. How are you guys doing? All right, mate. All right, mate. Not bad. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. It's been a nice, relaxing three weeks. Oh, so been, that's, yeah. Uh, like heaven, isn't it? Yeah. I know. I'm, I'm excited to watch the game, but I'm also not. But <laughs> Fair play. It's, mm. it's a little bit of both, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, the What I wanted to talk about was, well, touching on the Onana point. Yeah, the way he plays for Belgium is completely like different like you can tell he's way better of a player than what we see at everton mm, but it yeah. is based off like the play styles we have completely different uh, playing ability or just style of play yeah which is set to see but um talking about onana i saw we're linked to he's linked to barcelona yeah um and in that Barcelona deal, they don't really have money either, but they have players. Mm. So one of the players I see is that a lot of hype is behind, and I've seen him play since I do support Barcelona on the side a little bit. It's fine. Is, on the uh, side. For me, yeah, yeah. So and you're the me, reason why both clubs have fallen to bits? I might be. I, I feel I'm cursed. A lot of the teams I follow have just gotten worse and worse. <laughs> so uh, I, it, might, it might be me. <laughs> I might have to go support, like, city and see if they like yeah. start losing <laughs> but um the the player that is most interesting was fermin lopez or i guess on some mm. body but fermin lopez would you guys take him if he was available uh yes is, it, is an answer is he is he a good footballer yes therefore yes i will take him if he was available would, would, like, uh, I guess the better way would, is like, would it, you do a swap or would you want money in return? Oh, no, 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 we need money. I mean, I wouldn't be taking any player who's, who's just a swap deal. Everton need money. It'd have to be but Firm and Lopez plus 40 after 50 million for Onana. Um, that's how much it'd have to be. Everton have got to get at least double what they paid for Amadou Onana for yeah. it to be worth our while. Mm. Which is hard because he's valued at forty five, and we paid yeah, but who valued who, who, Furman Lopez? No, well, Furman Lopez. Well, if, the, if he signs a new contract mm. in the coming like months, then I it, it would it would have to be a swap. But based off like his contract right now, we I think he's valued at like twenty five or thirty. Okay, but uh, so, Onana, who and what are you saying? Onana's value is like. 45? No, there's no... There's not in any... 45, 50 is right. No, not in any universe is he that that cheap. And if Everton That's sell what him, we bought him for too, right? We bought him for 30 million. And Good he's enough. had two seasons in the Premier League. Mm. He's six foot five. He's a Belgian international. 22 years of age. If I'm sorry, but if people... If like Casado's going for 115 million, then... And that Onan is better than Casado, in my opinion. Then yeah. he, he, you're talking 80, 85 million. I would. Why not? Lavia went for 60 million, well, 58 million. Everton cannot be selling him for 45 million. Three years left on his contract. Yeah, no chance. Yeah, it, I'd, I'd, want, I'd, want, I'd want 80 million for Onan, hmm? at least. Because this just in, just in other, just in other play, like Lavia. You know, just in just for what players have gone for in the last couple of years in the Premier League, I'm sorry, but if Everton sell him for, if Everton don't start the bids at like eighty million, then then he's staying at us then, because no one should, no one should like uh, treat us like mugs because we need money. You've got to have you've got to have a valuation for a player. He's a Belgium international. He starts for Belgium, and yeah. therefore he's going. You know, he'll go to the Euros, and therefore a few teams will want you. Don't you don't get. Too many six foot five, uh, uh, you know playing. DMs, yeah, ball playing DMs anywhere that can that can get round the pitch, that can tackle, clean tackle it as well, compress. Yes, he has to add goals to his game, but like you look at someone like you know when Declan Rice went to went to Arsenal, yeah, he was he was an all action player, but there was a lot of times for West Ham where just 18 months before and where I didn't, I didn't see it. And then suddenly it clicked. And then when he's gone to Arsenal, it's gone on. You ever yeah. got to look at it like the same, like this is a player that it's got so much talent and ability. Um, 
and we have to be compensated. We had the team who brought him from Europe into the Premier League. We took that chance on him, yeah. and we have to be compensated for that. And that's, that's if we're compensated like twenty million quid, then what was the point? Why would we do that? Why would yeah. we do that again? So we have to be compensated big. We have give this lad. We've took off the rough edges or some of the rough edges. He's become a regular, as I said, in, in the Belgium team. And we should be compensated for that massively. Yeah. And then on the similar note, the other player is Branthwaite. And I see he's only rumored to be selling for 45. <laughs> and I think that's ridiculous. Like, at least the reports I see is like, oh, Man United feels a strong $45 million bid would get it through. And I think that's so stupid because like, he's like he just broke into the England team. Sure, he didn't play, mm. which I think is also like Dunk played terribly. So I honestly thought mm. Bradley would get in over him, but um, I don't know. That I just found that also a bit ridiculous of how low the valuations. And I feel that's just partially because they play for Everton. Yeah, that teams feel that they're able to get our players were significantly cheaper just mm. because of how poor the club's been run. Yeah. Well, he's another so one. Like... He's another one. You know, for three years left on a contract. Um, 21. You know, 21, 22 in the summer. You know, uh, will, will, when he signs, if he goes to a Manchester City or Manchester United, he'll be there for 10 years. If he went anywhere, he'd be there for 10 years. He's a, he's a modern centre-back, turn a pace, six foot five, Left foot, plays the ball, composed. Me and Baz have just done a video on him. Composed on the ball, doesn't just boot it down the pitch when he feels like he's in under pressure. He calmly gets the ball to one of his players. That's what big clubs look for. They don't look for players who panic under the ball. They look for players who play it out under pressure. You know, we we he's another one that you think, you know, if we're going to sell him, sell him and get the money for him. Forget about sell-on clauses and all this nonsense. If he goes to Manchester City, he's staying at Man City. If he goes to Man United, he's staying at Man United. Get a huge fee for him um, because he's another one. These play, these players, you know, aren't everywhere. People will go, oh, he's only the same as someone else. We've all watched them. We know how good he is. We've watched plenty of centre-backs. We've watched plenty of defenders in the last few years. We know what the real deal is. And this lad is the real deal. Um, and therefore, again, we brought him in. We paid a million quid for him. We've given them the time. We've we've took the time with him. We've put him on loan. We this has been all on us, and we should be compensated for that. Yeah. For we should be compensated for it. And then because of loss of our one of our first team players, what player is one of our first names on the team sheet now? At the end of the day, he's not some kid. He's one of our top players. Exactly. You know, if he was. If he was, you know, if he was one of one of the other players, if he was whoever, then yeah, you go, yeah, 20, 30 million for him. This lad, we all know how good this lad is and we we all know. We wouldn't be talking about him like this. We wouldn't be almost accepting that he's going to go to a top club. We all know he's going to a top club. So therefore, we want top money for him. If his name was Jario Branfoetio and he played in La Liga and Man United had just found him, what are you laughing at, Ned? It's me, Jack. Jario, <laughs> it's a me, a Jario. <laughs> um, Man Man City would be putting down seventy million for him because they know that they're getting one before he's at. He's made. If he played for this, makes me laugh. If he was at West Ham United now, hmm. how much will people be saying Brantway to be going for or Onana? Yeah, they um, wouldn't be saying forty million. Hmm. There's not a chance. Hmm. If they were at Brighton, the pair of them, how much do you think Brighton would be charging for them? Because it wouldn't be forty million, hundred million exactly. euros. So it, all of this has these figures that these people quote. It's just nonsense. And if Everton have got anything about both of them, have got at least three years left on their current deals. Yeah. So Everton could easily turn around and go. Neither of them are going anywhere. If yeah. you want this player, it's seventy-five million. Don't ring us for any other fee other than that. See you later. Don't even fax us. Don't fax us. Uh, and off. for for PSR, we don't. Do we have to sell this year? Or... Yeah, I think we probably have to sell probably. every year, don't yeah. we? But I, I have no idea. Is this the the real answer to that, mate? But you may be one of them because what one yeah. of them? What we might be doing, Ed, is we might be all right PSR wise, but it's what cash you've got 
to spend right. on players going out. So if Everton are looking and think, right, well, we'll sell Onana, and that's why mm. if Everton could get 65, 70 million, say, for Onana, you know, then that gives you some cash to put down for other players. And, you know, say we cleared 40 million after the sell, and we've already paid a couple of chunks to to Leal anyway. We cleared 40 million. 30 of that could go on players as down payments for four or five players. The other 10 can go into the club for whatever as it needs the cash. And that's how you that's how you build that your team up and make it much better. Yeah, I, Ideally, I, I, you wouldn't sell either, but, yeah, but we may yeah. well have to. Yeah, if I if we had a sell one, I would probably sell Onana if we mm-hmm. have died charge just because he doesn't play him or it mm-hmm. doesn't it, it doesn't fit the system, I guess is the best way to put it. And yeah. then I also wouldn't sell him until after the Euros. No, we can't go to after the Euros. Plays way better at that level, which hopefully would bring his price up. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. And listen, to, you long for the days when Brantwaite and Onana are a part of your team, you yeah, build course. them. But right now, that isn't the case. Well, but we should try and keep one of them. Yeah. Well, Onana, Onana will be going to his second major tournament. Only obviously mm. he went to the World Cup, got sent off in the World Cup, didn't he? Okay. Um, so this will be second major tournament, and therefore you look at it and you think, right, he probably thinks this is the time. Two years at Everton, this is the time with everything going on. But Brantway definitely, you keep him for another year, and maybe for his own development, he needs another year. Um, yeah. Well, he probably does. He does. He does because well, he, he does, can go yeah. somewhere and sit on the bench. I mean, you know, so it's sad. It is really sad that we have to talk like this, but this is the club that we've we've um created. We've no? created and being and and yeah. So um yeah. And I, yeah, I think the last thing I wanted to mention was for the Bournemouth game, what's your confidence level going into that game? <laughs> Just because it's been so long. It, we haven't played, mm. it's been three weeks. <laughs> what, 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 I don't. What, I don't know because as a you know, it's funny because when they were getting beat two nil against Luton, you were like, "Oh, you do these," and then they turn it round to three two, and you're like, "Yeah, four three, yeah, four three, whatever it was." I can't remember three what nil to four. It's been three. so long, I can't remember. Yeah, you're thinking now, oh my god, these have got goals in them, but no, listen, it'll be a tough game, and it's a game we really need to get something out of. Obviously, with Newcastle on the Tuesday, and then heading into a huge game against Burnley. Evan, I've got to start winning games again, and if you know we could do it, do it on Saturday. It's always it's always interesting coming back from a break. You always find both teams are a little bit can be a little bit ropey, and and it, maybe it's better to catch a team at home when there's no expectation on you. So. Um, I'm weirdly I'm all right when we're away. I feel like we I feel like we'll be in the game mm. and I feel like the manager will have them well organised and therefore there's no reason why Bournemouth aren't Manchester yeah. City. Do you know what I mean? So Everton could easily go to there and win. It's a difficult game. We've got a terrible record there. We normally get beat, but we've gone there in good form in the past and lost, so maybe maybe this will be the reverse of that. And Everton are entering ten games now to save the season, save the club, so Sat starts on Saturday. They're well capable of going and winning at Bournemouth. They're also well capable of going and getting beat at Bournemouth. So, confidence wise, I think, I think we'll be right in the game. It's whether it's whether we can take our chances and, and get over the line with the three points. To be honest. Okay. Yep. Thank you guys for your time. Nice Cheers, one, Eddie. Eddie. Nice one for getting in touch, mate. Mate. Bye, take guys. it easy. See you later. See you later. Bye. Just want to say hello to Oliver. Okay. You're right, mate. Okay. Um, Someone in the comments said that you were in a hearing aid. Who me? Yeah. No, yeah, these yeah. are our, these are our, how yeah. we listen to people. Like you know, you go. when you go and see bands and stuff, and they have the yeah. thing. This is yeah. all TV shows like that. Yeah, prof- the professional ones, you so go. you can't see them, and it's they look called, like John Cena. What's that, Ned? See. It's called in ear monitoring. Is it called in ear monitoring? There you go. Ned, monitoring. Is it? Yeah. Thanks for that, Ned. There you go. It's great. Science. It's great. Science. What kind? What branch of science is that? Physics. 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 It's physics. Daniel Nero. Jaffrey, what a name, says 2 0 Everton. That's right. Is right, lad. That's right. right, lad. Um, into our Premier members, uh, Gary Walters, howdy. Uh, Mark Max says, liked the top 10 goalkeepers video. Will you do a right back one next? Some funny names will be in that list. We will be doing a right back one. Why will there be funny names in it? Like funny names as in, like. Phil. Phil. <laughs> Phil. 
Um, Bill says, uh, oh, Nana was good. Just played simple. Allowed them a platform. We lack so much going forward with pace and cutting edge. We can't make use of that. He goes to United, Chelsea or Arsenal. He looks boss. Benjamin says, what's the Forest equivalent of this show today? And it was hilarious. Basically, they're saying the same things as you were, etc. Surprised at the leaks. Who'd have thought little dicky masters would leak a story? Unbelievable, Jeff. Um, Bill says, what about PSR? Do we have to sell by the 30th of June again? There's no indication we do, but who knows? Benjamin says, if we sell Onana at the optimum price, do you think the Spanish manager who left Wolves would be good for us? Lopetegu. Mm, maybe, but he, he had issues. But he was fuming, wasn't he? Mm. He was absolutely fuming. Keith Hall says, uh, just finished the Tony Grant interview, Baz. Brilliant insight, possibly the best so far. Well done, Baz and the team. Thank you, Keith. Watch the Tony Grant Inside the Game interview. Tony. If you Tony Grant. Tony Grant. <laughs> what the hell was that? I don't know. Who knows? Did that, just, did that go out to everybody or just to us? Okay. Are you sure? Okay. okay. Uh, we've got Abby on the line. Hello, guys. Hello, Abby. Yeah. You're all right? Yeah, not too bad. Good, good. Um, what do you want to say? I've been... I've, I've been thinking about whether we... Uh, whether we need to change the style of play and whether we can. Mm. And whether we... Even if... Dice doesn't think some of these youngsters are ready or good enough. We've got to do something because we've got no pace. Correct. Um, and I just think perhaps somebody like Jensen Metcalf or or um, Mackenzie Hunt might give something different. Um, I don't know where he would play them though at, at, to be honest because one's a left back and one is a centre midfield player and I just cannot see him yeah, or, changing or could, his midfield to, to put one of them in could, could um, what's his name Quiate do something honestly no Right, okay. In my opinion, not ready. Not ready. Um, I, I get what you're saying, trying to inject a little bit of pace in. How I would change it up is potentially go to three at the back and play with wing-backs and have two centre-forwards. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd have a, 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 if you like, a traditional 3-5-2, if you like, or a 5-3-2, however you want to look at it. But I would have three centre-backs and then I'd have the core a, um, Onana and one of James Garner or Adrissa I'd have I suppose if you played it I'd have Seamus Coleman right right wing back and then take your pick from Dwight McNeil or Jack Harrison as the left wing back have Mikhailenko, Brantway, Tarkovsky as the three at the back and have Beto and Dom up front and try to get try to, to create more opportunities for the two front men, make sure the core is breaking into the box, try and get goals that way, because you've still got a yeah. lot of insurance on the pitch that way uh, I don't think he'll do that, I think he'll stick with 4-4-2 or 4-4-1-1 and it'll be much of the same but that was if, if you're going to change it that's how I would change it, and try to get should another striker on for the goals Should Chimiti be getting a bit more of a chance? Um, possibly, possibly, but again, if you if he if he went to a three five two five three two, then you would have the opportunity to give Chimiti a chance, wouldn't you? With with kind of like fifteen minutes to go, because he'd just go right alongside one of the, one of the striker which you're taking off, you know. And Lewis yeah. Dobbin could do that. Lewis Dobbin, yeah. who of course yeah. a few years ago played up front at Chelsea. Uh, replaced Nella Sims, played half an hour in front of Chelsea and looked quite lively. So he could go and be right alongside yeah, whichever he, he one comes off. He would provide pace as well, wouldn't he? Exactly. So. Exactly. So that, to me, that is how, uh, how I would mix it up because right now we haven't got really, you know, we haven't got any 
pace to bring in the windows not open and things like that maybe Dan Juma coming back might help yeah uh, but he's again he's another one if you played that 3 5 2 5 3 2 formation he's another one who could go in alongside the centre forward and, and pick the ball up and run with it and give you that extra little bit of dynamism because we a couple of our best performances this season have been at Aston Villa and, and at Burnley and Everton <laughs> played three at the back in those games and we're yeah. very attacking so, yeah, I think I think three at the back is. We might need to go back to that because the current formation isn't working. Mm. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, how many games realistically in the running do you see us having a chance to win? Having a chance to win, or do I think we will win? Having a chance to win is probably six or seven, isn't it? Well, I mean, I don't like writing games off. The no, derby, I'm not writing the derby, them off, I'm just... Well, I would look at the four home games. If you take the, put the derby to one side, because that, you know, we don't generally, we haven't won one for ages, but it's that good, isn't it? It's a night game. We could win it. You never know. But yeah. put that to one side. A lot of times they end draws, them games. But put that to one side. Everton should be looking to be Burnley, Sheffield United, Forest and Brentford at home. There's no yeah. reason why they shouldn't beat all of them. Willie is a, is a totally different question. right? And then you look away from home and you go, Bournemouth, really? They're, they're all right. They're not amazing. Why can't Everton go and win at Bournemouth? I think Newcastle will be very tough. Chelsea... Whatever Chelsea team turns up on the night at Stamford Bridge, if yeah, I've seen other teams go there and beat them, so why not? I think Arsenal away. I think I'm safe writing that one off. I don't see anything other than a defeat there. Um, and have I missed one out? Got Bournemouth, Newcastle, Chelsea, Arsenal, Bam. and Luton. Why can't we go and win at Luton? Yeah. Luton in the bottom, well, well, sorry, Luton with a fourth bottom. So you look at the games like that, Ab, I think you I could you could easily make a case for Everton winning at least five of those games. Oh, yeah, on, yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't writing the top. I'm just... Yeah, on paper. But the reality is, Abby, we've won. We've, we haven't won a game for four months, yeah. nearly. And we've won three home games all season. And I'm saying we could win four in the last six weeks of the season. And we've won three home games all season. You know what I mean? So Everton yeah. may well do. They may well do. But it's still when you're looking at it that way. And I guess what objective people who've got nothing to do with Everton would look at it and go, right, you've won three home games all season. How are you going to win four in five games? But it can be done because it's football. And sometimes teams, this break might have done Everton the world of good. They might come back and just get a couple of big wins under the belt. And all of a sudden, pressure lifts and the confidence. Did anyone think we'd win those four games on the run in December? No. no. And we did. So it can it can happen. But do I think it'll happen? That's a different question. Mm. I hope it does because we need it. Mm. I, think we need, I think we need at least 13 points yeah. at least to stay up. Yeah. So we're going to have to, in my opinion, we're going to have to get four wins from somewhere. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm saying 13 points. I think probably another couple on top of that. But, I mean, Matt, what do you think? Um, no, I think three wins and four draws, I think. So just losing three games out of ten? Maybe. I don't know. Mm. That's what we're going to have to do, aren't we? Well, we're going to need, we're, we're going to need, we're on 25 points now. I think we'll end up losing another two points, which puts us back to 23. Mm. So I think 30, 36 points. Yeah. I don't think Luton will get more than 36 have points. To make and sure, I don't think Forrest We will. have to make sure Forrest and Luton don't beat us. They're key games. We They're have absolutely to make sure key games. That they don't beat us. Um, and then clearly take the points in other games. So 13 points is what I said originally. If we lost two, which I think we might in this, this second case, mm. and we got 13, that puts us on 36. I don't see Forrest or Luton, both of those clubs, getting 36 points. One of them might. I don't know whether two of them will. Burnley definitely won't. Sheffield United are gone, in my yeah, opinion. No, no. Burnley so, and Sheffield United are gone. Yeah. So it's between us, Forrest and Luton, isn't it, essentially, and Brentford. But I think Brentford might just have enough because of Tony. 
So in my opinion, we need we need at least thirteen points, Abby, which is if you want to do it simply, it's four wins and, and a draw out of ten games. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think I think I don't see why we can't win any of the home games because we've got a team that when we when we pl- when we play well, we can. You know, when we play, yeah. if we play well enough, we can win. Mm. But it's whether we will play well enough. Mm. Yeah, well, that's it, isn't it? We that's seem to have a we seem to have a mental block at home or something. If we could just put the ball in the back of the net, we'd have a great chance, wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? We we need people who can put the consistently put the ball in the back of the net. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but... that's our problem. We don't have. If Dom can start scoring in the next ten games, yeah, mm. and then we've got and Beto again can score a couple more. Um, yeah. I think we've got a decent chance. I don't think I don't think we'll go down. We will if we don't win games, Abby. Yeah, if we don't <laughs> win games, we will. Yeah, but but if we start winning games, I don't think we'll go down. No, of course. Listen. Uh, is Dominic has Dominic Calvert Lewin got the ability to get five goals in the final ten games? Yes, Willie is a different thing. He's yeah, got, yeah. he hasn't scored Com- for months. No, but... co- confidence is a problem, isn't it? Exactly. And Beto's got the ability to get a couple of goals in those ten games. Dwight McNeil, we've seen score goals in the past. The Corey's come up with goals. Each season when we've needed it, well, guess what? We need it now. Jack Harrison's got three this season, but he's capable of getting another two or three. They're capable. Whether they do it is the, is the big thing, Gabby, and they're going to have to. Listen, we can we can have a go at the manager. Absolutely, we can. We can have a go at the yeah. coaching staff. We can have a go at the recruitment team, and rightly so, for never putting pace into the squad, which is criminal in my opinion. Um, but... When they cross, when those players cross the white line, it's on them. The manager yeah. Yeah. can't do anything once they cross the white line. If Dwight McNeil has got an open goal like he had against West Ham and missed for 2 0, yeah. he puts yeah, yeah, that yeah. in for 2 0, it's game over. And yet he misses. Yeah. You can't, we can't have a go at the manager for that. No. That's that's Dwight McNeil. So, you know, and, and Beto's got the opportunity from the penalty spot and misses it. Dominic Calvert-Lewin's missed sitters. James Tarkovsky's missed headers at the back post that he should be scoring. You know, or, or we even when we've had the lead late in games, we haven't marked players. We allowed Lewis Dunk a free header against Brighton when the game was practically done. Imagine yeah, with the yeah, one, we one gone there. Would have been a huge victory. West Ham were 1-0 up and we allowed Kerr Toomer a free header. You know, these things cannot happen from these players, regardless of how good or bad the manager is. The players have to step up as well. And we've got 10 games. Like I said, we need, in my opinion, we need 13 points. And I've seen a couple of people saying, good idea, Baz, on the formation, but there is no way the manager has the balls to play that. Well, fair enough. I'm just saying, I'm just answering the question what Abby puts to me. But at the end of the day, the players have to do the job, Pet, don't they? Yeah, of course yeah. they do. Yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody... Me- Maybe tongue in cheek, or maybe because he can come up with the odd um, good goal. Says, try Keen up there. Uh, yeah, but listen, Michael Keen, great in training. <laughs> um, we've, we've we've seen him go up front in a couple of games. He done with Wolves to create a goal. In all fairness, last season, but that's emergency tactics, have not it? Yeah, really, yeah, yeah, it's so, emergency uh, tactics. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? That's why I say tongue in cheek. Yeah. Because yeah. it would only be emergency because he's 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 he makes whether it's in defence or whatever wherever it is, he just makes too many mistakes. Yeah. You, yeah. It's like like I remember last season when he scored against um Tottenham. He Yeah. A lot of the highlights reel was Michael Keane. Because he he made that goal line clearance, he gave away the penalty, and then he scored. <laughs> oh yeah, he's he's had that. Michael Keane. You, you see, like you see the best and saying. worst of him in every in in. He can have good yeah. games, but he yeah. doesn't have them in, enough. No. no, no, that's it. Listen, to, I don't. 
you know, I think our issues are at the top end of the pitch scoring goals, aren't they? Although saying that we are at the moment we're averaging conceding two goals a game in the last few games, which is shocking. So this listen, this break might have come at the right time for us, Abby. We might have they've been off to Portugal. They've uh, had, went out for a slap up meal. Right. Um and you know we'll, Yeah, we'll see what happens. And and that might have that might have been the uh, you know, that might have been like a reset that people need. Yeah, hope, um, hope I hope so, and I hope Seamus gets a few games. Yeah. yeah, well, maybe he will. Maybe he will now. You know, maybe he's back. He's played two games for Ireland. Had a very good game last night by all accounts. So um, maybe that's all he needed, and, and the manager will put him back in the side now. Yeah, Hopefully. I mean, I saw. I've seen a couple of links um, to players. I mean, we're we're linked with obviously still linked with Amari Benjamin. Yeah. Because obviously he's becoming uh, a free transfer in the summer. Mm. Well, he's been on trial, hasn't he? And I think he's done and, okay. And we seem to like him as well, didn't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we're linked. We were linked today with a young player from Celtic. Yeah. We were. Rocco Vata. Yeah. Who? Who? Who sounds? I mean, I can't say I've ever. I've ever seen him because I haven't. Yeah. But what I've read, he's he seems. Like the type of player we should be going for. Well, we've got we're trying to identify young talent, aren't we, and bring it in and hopefully develop it, and either they play for us or we sell them on. And you know, we've got which is what we haven't done enough of. We've got um, kid coming in from Ireland as well in the the summer. Yes, who, we who have scored we? a lot of goals. So and they're looking at a kid from Partick Thistle as well, another young striker who, who's done well of late. So they're looking hopefully in the right areas. A couple of the Brazilians they've watched three or four times now who are young as well. So that's what you have to do and, and it's not something Everton have done particularly well. Things have got no. to change. Things have got to change. No, and, and it will it's all dependent on the money we've got to spend as well, isn't it? Well exactly and that's why that's why Everton, I guess, are trying to, um, are trying to go down that road. And if, if you do bring good players in, young players, and you develop them, they can save you a hell of a lot of money. Hmm. Oh yeah, of course run. they can. And 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 I mean, we're lo- we we we've got a few players coming into the last year of their contract in in the summer. Yeah. Obviously, Keane and Godfrey. Yeah. Uh, is um, Decore as well? No, he signed a new deal, didn't he? Yeah, he's got a year. Yes, he did, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Um, and then we've got several several players, like the likes of Kyle John and a few younger. Quiete is another one who are coming to the end of their contract and will leave, most likely leave on a free. Yeah. If yeah, we yeah. don't, if there's ones we don't want to... Unless we want to, you know, um, put them back on an, a new contract and send them out on loan, so they actually get gay, proper games. But yeah. I don't see us keeping Kyle John because if we did, if we really wanted to play him, we would have played him by now. Yeah, I think I think Kyle will. I think Kyle will move on. To be fair, I mean, I was sad to see that McAllister got injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he on. seemed to be doing okay in the first three games of his first three or four games of being up there. He scored a goal and got an assist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think and, it's. I don't think it's a bad one though. I think he'll be. I think. Sure, Dunk said it wasn't too bad. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully he'll should be, be. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, he should get another couple of games before the end of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's 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 one we want we apparently want to keep around, isn't he? Well, I think they're just trying to... Um, I think they're just trying to, to see how he goes up there because obviously he did well at the 21s and they're trying to get him into men's football, aren't they? And um, see how he does. And, you know, he ate his thigh. I think the initial prognosis was something like four to six weeks. He's been out for three already, maybe four now. So he's probably gonna be back mid to end of April. So he might get back and play the kind of like the last three or four games of the season. Yeah, B- which would be good if that's the case. And um, you know that, that hopefully he can do okay. And then th- 
who knows, you know, the, the pathway for him might be another season on loan there or yeah. go to somewhere yeah, yeah. in or England. somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Um, is um, Lewis Warrington one of the ones that's coming out of contract? Or has he signed a new one? I think he's still got 15 months left, Lewis Warrington. I might be wrong. But no, I, I thought he had I a bit of time yeah, left. Yeah, I don't think he's out of contract this summer. I might be wrong on that, but I'm, I don't think he's out of contract this summer. No, I thought I might have read that he's he's got he's either got 15 months left or a year left. Mm. I think it's about 15, because he signed a two-year contract extension, summer. didn't he? No, he's out of contract this summer. Oh, he is? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, he is, so, so I yeah, was yeah. right. Yeah. It. So, well, you, you give three eventualities, Abby. So you were correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Well, there you go. So, um, Everton will decide on him. Obviously, mm. I imagine he'll get another deal. Whether it's a, an extra two year, and, and they'll probably try and loan him for a season, and then see if he can develop. Oh, no, well, that's what that's what they do, though, don't oh, they? Yeah. They do. They though. generally go two more years, mm. and then they work with Nathan Broad. At the end, up getting money for him because he's thirty six now. Come on, that's night, brother, didn't he? Mm. Wales, later. on. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll have to yeah. see how we go with that one as well. Happy days. Yeah, there you go. All right, Ab. then. Uh, thanks, um, Ab. I okay, have... Ab. All right, cheers. Yeah. All right, thanks, Bye. Ab. Take Bye. care. Bye. Uh, right, let's finish off. Go ahead. With the sacked managers game. Yeah. Oh, what a game. The what sacked managers game. game. When are we going back to? We are going back to 2004. Four, two thousand and five oh. season. Oh. Making, this is going to be difficult. Oh. This one. And we're going to start with three big hitters. We're going to start it's with twenty years ago. This. Liverpool. Who was the outgoing manager for Liverpool? Gerard Hulier. Hang on, two thousand four, five. Two thousand four, five. Gerard. Oh, Hulier. in the summer. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Hulier. Yeah. yeah. Who the and who took the job off? Rafa Benitez. Easy one to start. Shut up, you. You're not playing. playing. You're not playing. playing. You're you're like the reserve. Yeah. If you if you Baz can't get it, you can jump in. Chelsea. Four. Four five. Claudio Ranieri. Out. Yes. Jose Mourinho in. Correct. This one, this one's going to be hilarious. Tottenham Hotspur. This one, you ain't going to get this. You're just not going to get either name. You're not going to get either name. I'm not going to get it when you keep telling me I'm not going to get it, are you, my God, Miss Jones? Glenn. Uh, you just shut up, Elvis. <laughs> You're not playing. Two, Glenn. 20 years ago. Quagmire. Not far away. I'm trying to think of Spurs at that time. Right. Not Martin. Think Yacht. of a man. Think of a man, an overjoyed man. A, a, oh, running, is this bloody hold your plums running, again? Run, no, no, a man running. Picture a man running. Where is that? You ever seen a manager run in celebration? Glenn Hoddle. Will you just shut up? Is he not the manager of Tottenham? No. A running man. A running manager? Who's the first manager comes in when you think of a manager running? Running, running. No, no, no. David Pleas. singing. David Pleas is correct. 2004, he had that a little correct. go. He had a little go, didn't he? He was taken sh- over by... Spurs in 04. You ain't getting this. Aren't I? No. Where's he from? France. Oh. No, it's no, a Christian Go on, if you know it, say it. He's French. Yeah, go on. He's That's right. Manager. He kind of gave on. you that when he said France. 2004. Yeah, there's the three of the main things I give you there. And he took over David Pleat. Um, <laughs> Why isn't your camera on? Um, give me his initials. I'll get it with the initials. JS. I won't get it. You're not him. getting it. Jasper. <laughs> yeah, Jasper. Go on. You, Julian. Julian. Cesar. I can't. Jean Jean Luc Jean Luc Jean Luc Saban P- P- Jean Luc Jean Luc Picard Jean Luc Saban Jean Luc Picard it was no that's not a real person well it is it was it was from Star Trek Space two thousand and four J S mm. Jack Jack Jackies Jack is Jack his first Jack. name Jack Jack his first Jack. name Jack Jack Wes M L shut up Jack <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah. But you like it's just there. Yeah. Think, think like what do what do Catholics become when they when they like Saint. ascend? Saint. Dead. No, no. But what did he become? You know, like like A spirit. No, no. Like the popes and stuff. What did he become when they go? Many, what do you mean? What when they canonize? Saint? Yeah. So think Saint Jacques. Saint Saint Jack Saint, Jack Saint a, Saint but a little one Saint Gravesy. So a little what's a what's another word for a li, for little small Jack Small Tiny. No no what? Saint Small Sainty Saint Sainty So put you've got Saint Saint you've got Tiny Saint Tiny Put them together Tiny Saint Saint Tiny <laughs> Why don't I remember this Saint Tiny Jack Saint Saint Tiny Jackson, Tony, Jackson, That's it, Jackson, with a bit of French. Jackson, Tony, Jack Santini, Jack Santini. <laughs> like you knew that? No, no. Now you've said it. Right. Yeah, Jack okay, Santini. Close. Yeah. There we go. Southampton, Scottish. Scottish. First name Paul Lambert. No. Paul. Second part of his name is a very well-known wrestler. Paul Undertaker. <laughs> Paul Cena, <laughs> Paul John Cena, Paul, Paul Scottish. Yeah, second half of his name is a wrestler, but he's also an actor, and in acting he doesn't. Paul need... Johnson. No. Oh. What, what? Paul Dwayne. No, but what is wrestling? Paul Rock. No, yeah. So you've got Paul Rock, but 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 there's a, there's a beginning. Paul Sherlock. Paul Ruddock. No. No. Rock. Sort of like that. Paul Barock. No. <laughs> Paul Barocka. <laughs> Like if you were knighted, Paul but like Hammer. say you were knighted, but you said it in a Scottish way. Paul Knight. Sir Paul Rock. Paul Sherrock. Paul Sturrock. Yes! You're oh. up. Yes. Remember he was the manager. Yeah. And who took he over? Was right. right, who took over? Oh. English. Let's see here. Alan Pardew. Right. Okay. First name is the same name as <coughs> one of the callers we've had on. Abby. No. Eddie. Kelly. First name, Steve it's Kelly. Steve. Oh, Steve. S- first part of his second name is what you love watching videos of, putting on their heads. Steve Wiggins. Steve. Steve Wiggly. Yes. Steve Wiggly. There you go. Steve Wiggly. Newcastle United sacked. Oh four oh five. Lloyd Hullet. This one would have been emotional to sack him. Oh. Alan Shearer. No. The other one. Alan. Sh- no. Alan no. The other one. Glenn Rhoda. No, emo- there would have been an emotional... emotional. Bobby Robson. Yeah. Say Bobby F- Say. Say. Taken Bobby over Robson. by a... Right. Absolute... Got the job. Really? Doesn't like Paul Pogba. Graeme Souness. Yeah. Really? Souness, that when it was? Yes. Oh, it was, because oh, yeah. he tried to get... Blackburn famous, Rovers. Graeme Just... Souness. Yes. He went out. And who took the job? Sam Allardyce. Oh, for... Your favourite Everton player of all time. <gasps> Adrian Heath. <laughs> Mark Hughes. No, you wouldn't talk over Black Hughes. You wouldn't talk over Black Mark. Burnley. West Burnley. Brom. Former Everton player. Gary Megson. Yes. He was the West Brom manager. And who took his job? The, the man who d- who had another club wore shorts and socks and a shirt and the keepy ups. Oh, Tony Pulis. Michael Knight <laughs> took over it from. <clears throat> no, but there's a connection. Is he English? Yes. Oh. Gary Megson out West Brom. Is he a former Premier League, uh, former Division he One had player? Shorts on him. When he took, when he was the manager of another club, he took over at another club in the Premier League, and yeah, the top, and he was player manager, so they put him on shorts and socks and a suit. Did he? I, yeah. I don't remember that. Okay, Ooh. he did. He was English. English, very, very well known English player for England. He was like supposed to be the player of a generation. Glenn Hoddle. No. Player of a generation. I know, but it could have been from any year. No, because he took over the manager in 2004. Oh, no, so, but, he'd been but he'd wrong. just been somewhere. He was. He, was he playing manager afterwards? Oh, no, interesting. He You'll have to give No, me. beforehand he was playing manager. And where he was beforehand, oh, we had boss players who were Brazilian. 90s player of a generation. Player of a generation in the 80s. In the 80s? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. But he was still playing in the 2000s. But no. They, in the 90s, I'm trying to think of West Brom from that time. I'm probably doing this wrong. So he's probably, f- like, let's say 40. So he's younger in the 80s. English. Ended up, ended up one of his last clubs, he or certainly ended up 
winning a major trophy that he'd been after for years. Can I ask a clue? Not as, as a player. Oh, as a player, yeah. not as a manager. I'll give you an impression of him in a major tournament. Brian Robson. Yes. Oh. Tottenham Hotspur. Jack Santini. Yes. Out. He's been sacked Replaced now. by... 05. 04. Didn't made it to November. Spurs just love sack yeah. managers, don't they? Too early for Harry Redknapp. Too early. Think of the way he looks a bit like Tony Soprano. Hang on, 04, 05. Ooh. So we got spanked by them at Christmas Think 5 about... too. When was this fella sacked? This... No, he's coming in in November. Right, so they beat us 5-2 on Boxing Day, didn't he? Dean Marnie. Think of a gangster. Think about an Italian Tony Soprano. Is he Italian? No, sorry. A European Tony Soprano. Tony Soprano. Hey, yeah. Tony. Uh, looks, it? looks like him. Looks like Tony Soprano. Bit Don't like... say it. Better not be Martin Yolt. Martin Yolt. Martin Yolt. Shrek. That's all you have to say. <laughs> Portsmouth. Harry Redner. Do an impression. Well, you know, it's some great players you fought with, you know, and they shacked me, and I was like, what's that all about, you know, come on. Sandra. <laughs> right, go and who to took you. over, you're never getting this, and I can't give you any help, because I can't <coughs> even barely say his name. Yeah, but you can give me the initials. V. Z. Victor. Oh, for God's sake. Victor. Victor Zebra. <laughs> Victor Zocarerez. I'll know this. The worst that? thing is, I'll know this the minute you say his name. I'll I'll remember. Where's he from? He's from. Gotta be something like Greek or Bulgarian. VZ. No. Kane, shut up. Does Not Kane wrong. remember? No, but he says I'm wrong about another one, and you're wrong, Skemhead. Skemhead, though. Um, ah, Vasily, something. No. Vel. Vel. Oh, Velko. Vel no, no. Oh. Veldru. Veli. Yeah, Victor Mel. Veli. Velios. Veli. Veli. Me. Veli. Oli Me. Veli Me. Veli Me. Vladimir. Sir. Zach Jeff. You're never going to Zach that Jeff. One. Oh, oh he was on the tip of my top. Southampton. Who did we have at Southampton before? Wiggly. Steve Wiggly. Steve Wiggly. And he, oh. who took his job? Harry Redner. Do the impression. Harry Redknapp. Harry Redknapp. Did, no, just do the impression. I don't know who to impress. Well, you've you just done an impression Stop of? taking vaccines. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you is think. It, how is, it, is it Harry Redknapp? It's a, yeah, I don't Harry. know. Do the impression. You no, know, yeah, I think you need to be self to manage it. Great, Jamie Redknapp. Yes, Redknapp. Harry Redknapp. Harry Redknapp. Manchester City. Circa 2005. <laughs> Wasn't, was it Sven? Sven no. Gorick, no. no, no. 05 City. Is this 05 now? We've moved it. When was this? Yeah. 05. Yeah. Is he a former player? Was it he, he was a former footballer, What's yes. Your... Oh, okay. Former Premier League footballer. 2005. No. Former Division 1 Brian footballer. Hall. No. No. Well, we no, I know, but I'm thinking of they had a thing seven. of like Joe Royal and then they had Keegan, didn't he? They had Kevin Keegan. Was it Kevin Keegan? It was Kevin Keegan. Okay. And who wow. took the job off him? Mark Hughes. No. Nope. No, 2005. Think of... <laughs> hang on. Something mad happened in a Manchester City game. Something mad. Can you remember something mad that happened in a City game? Yeah, Pete. In Pete, 2005? Yeah. Something mad Peter, happened. Peter Schmeichel. Um, no. Something oh. mad happened at the end of that season. A tactical decision he was made. David James got brought on a front. Oh, front. Sarah Pierce. Off. Yes. Yes. Pierce. Portsmouth. Well, Redknapp's gone, hasn't he? So who? who, who oh no, Portsmouth was that yeah. Velko Vladi. Velimir Vladi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. And who took the job off him? It wasn't Redknapp. Two thousand and five. Uh, Reggie's brother. Not Jamie. Ronnie. Vladi. Ronnie. Clay. No, Reggie. Ronnie. Reginald. Ah, uh, Penn. Yeah. Pen. Ah. Uh, CJ? No. no. Uh, we had one of our, maybe our greatest ever player's first name. Dixie? No. Neville? The real, the real greatest ever for lots of people. Alec Young? No. Alec Neville? Alan Your son? Ball. Alan Ball? Alan Ball. So you've got Alan! Yeah. And you've got... Alan Reginald. <laughs> 
<laughs> Alain Perrin. Alain Perrin. Mm. Right, the last one. No, this one doesn't this count. This one doesn't count. Oh. Because it's Man City. Oh, for God's sake. So, so Pierce is gone. No, yeah, Pierce. Goes. It doesn't really count, this one. Why? Because he's caretaker. And then he becomes the manager, the manager and then he gets rid of him. Then go. Sven takes over, doesn't he? Sven, that, with Sven, the first uh, takeover with Shino Otter. Probably, I don't know. I don't oh, really care. Amazing. There you Vladimir go. Bozhinov and, go. and Alano and all that. in the comments. Is there any of pe- well, people right? Yeah. Oh, Bobby. Brian Glenn Robson, Roden. Martin. Glenn Young. Rodens. Glenn Rodens. Emma says Baz got a wig fetish. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Tremend- what a game. What a game. It is great. Everyone that the manager. loves that game. It's, a, it's tremendous. It's tremendous. Every and you know what? It seems that easy from my position, but that's such a difficult game. Oh, mate! It's because I'm trying to put yourself back into that season and going like you, you have to go there, full mate. share. You, I was yeah, four you years do. Old. Got to turn back time. What was that? I was four years old. Where are you though? Yeah, yeah. Class. Where are you though? Yeah. I don't think you were. Where are you though? I don't think you were. Mm. There you go. What another great game. The manager's game. The manager sack it's game. A, the manager sack game is amazing, <laughs> and especially when. A lot of them are Harry Redknapp. Grant Ferguson says, yeah, the manager's game is brilliant. It's so funny watching Baz get mad with it. It's because they're on. I can see them and it's you just like... Oh. Some of those names, though, are just like who? Alain Perrin. I need to find out. The only that. one I couldn't, I can't nearly pitch yet mm. is uh, Zell. Isn't it, Z- mad, isn't it mad, though, you have like these managers and you just think, oh, you just think, like these people where, you know, the Premier League's huge. So... Jacques Jean Claude Santini is a former Santini, French yeah. former professional football mm-hmm. play, manager. He played for Saint Etienne during the seventies and reached the European Cup final team in seventy six. Yeah, he has coached the French national I was team. Say, the national team winning manager, the two thousand and three Confederations Cup. Mm-hmm. There you go. Um, Do you remember Spurs getting him? They've had some mad ones. Spurs though, haven't they? Like Christian Groth, Alan Perrin, Juan De Ramos. Is a French yeah Perrin professional was a, yeah, was footballer. A player, yeah. Um, who else we got? <laughs> Zelimir Zajic, mm. Croatia professional Croatian, footballer yeah, and yeah. former player who's current president of Dynamo Zagreb. And looks a bit like um, John Tingo, who used to be the, uh, the Aki Stanley. He does, the, uh, the one who just said they yeah. had enough. This yeah, is but crap. he got sacked recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But John Coleman. John Coleman, he looks yeah. like the Evertonian. No, he's a Oh, no, the other one's no, the, the other Evertonian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, John Coleman. Paul Sturrock. Paul Sturrock, yeah. yeah. Ex Dundee United. Steve Wigley. Manager. Steve Wrigley, Southampton, Forest played Winger. Forest, Southampton, Sheffield United, mm. Birmingham, Portsmouth, Exeter. Yeah, uh, Steve Wrigley was one of the first players I saw that used to wear white tape under the shin pads and all around the ankles. Yeah, Steve he, Wrigley, what a guy! Player. What a guy! Tremendous um, blonde hair. Eh? Any? Of th- let me see. I was waiting for him. Who was that one? Southampton had with like the red hair. Remember him? Ah, what was his name? The coach. Stewart was it? Stewart. Let's see. Oh no, Merrington. Yeah. Remember him? Dave. Dave Merrington. Dead, isn't he? Dead. Dave. Well, why don't you bring it down? Trying to see how many have actually got jobs. They're Rafa all... hasn't, Mourinho hasn't. Uh, Harry hasn't. Sunes hasn't. Mark Hughes ha- got sacked by Bradford recently, didn't he? Yeah. Um, Martin Yall, I don't think has. No. Harry c- hasn't. Um, no, I don't think any of them have got jobs. David Police hasn't. No. No. There you oh, go. There you go. Incredible what game. A, what a game. What a game. What a, game. What a life. What a game. We've invented a great game. Amazing. We're going. Right, we're going. Hit the like button, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And watch our top ten goalie thing. See you later.